You are about to listen to another episode of That Sports Guys podcast, hosted by Craig Forrestal. Find Craig on Twitter at that underscore sports underscore guy. The That Sports Guys podcast is proudly featured by NFL Draft Diamonds, your draft coverage king. So sit back, relax, and enjoy some football talk. Hello and welcome to another episode of That Sports Guys podcast. I am Craig Forrestal. You may know me from Twitter as at that underscore sports underscore guy. But today it is all about Gavin Deneen, defensive tackle from Drake University that is now in the transfer portal. Gavin, what is going on, man? Nothing much, Craig. Thanks for having me on. Uh, pleasure to be on uh, Talk a Little Football with you. So uh, I'm excited about it. Hey, I'm excited too, but it seems like we've actually been in the same building before, but way different time frames. I actually went to the same high school you attended, Marion Central Catholic in Woodstock, Illinois. So it's a small world. I would sit here and ask you about some of the teachers that you had, but I have a funny feeling we didn't have a whole lot of overlap. I'm about 10 to 12 years older than you. So we'll yeah. go ahead and we'll keep that for a different day. But like I said, we're from the same neck of the woods, Gavin. Algonquin, Illinois, suburban Chicago. What's it like growing up there? Yeah, uh, it was it's pretty cool, actually. I definitely uh, – I actually moved a lot as a kid. So I lived over in Cary, which is pretty similar to Algonquin. Moved all the way out in Arizona. So I've definitely uh, – I've had my fair share of places to grow up in. But, you know, Algonquin was really good, and it's definitely – you know, I was blessed with, you know, a great situation growing up, uh, support from my parents and great friends. So um, definitely a great community to grow up in and had a lot of opportunity, you know, play various sports, you know, baseball, football, basketball. So uh, being able to do that. And then I'm, you get it um, as grow, going to Marion. There's just a lot of um, fun things to do around the area. So yeah, it's definitely a great place to grow up and I'm you know, blessed to have, you know, been where I've been. So. Yeah. Like you said, a lot of fun things because Marion is the only Catholic high school in our area. So kids from all over the County go to that school. So like you said, there's always something to do no matter what, because people are coming from all over. And I want to ask you about that school. Marion's a very small high school, roughly six to 700 students at a time is the enrollment. And it's tucked away on the Wisconsin, Illinois border, about 20 minutes south of the Wisconsin state line. But the football tradition is undeniable. Two former students, Brian Balaga and Chris Streveler, are currently on NFL rosters. There's loads of former players that have played at the Division I level, including yourself. Gavin, what is it about that program that allows them to continuously produce top-notch talent? Yeah, I mean, I think I think you kind of said it. They're definitely uh, pulling from such a big area. Um, I, I know Strellers from Crystal Lake. I'm pretty sure Balaga is too. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely pulling from all those areas helps. But, you know, it's definitely just a, a great culture, um, something that – uh, we've been able to build on. Um, it, so, you know, if when you show up to a program, it's not about us. It's about the guys, you know, that have come before you. So it's just kind of a, an immense pressure every single year that, you know, if, if you don't win a lot of games, you're going to have the alumni that are pretty mad. Um, so, and there's even, I mean, you said Strebler, who's someone that everyone in our, in our age groups, he, I play with him my sophomore year. He was a senior, so he's only a few years older than me. Um, so that was pretty cool. But there's guys like that, you know, aren't playing in the NFL, but we're also we're very solid high school football players that, you know, you know, they're, you know, dialed into Marion football every Friday after they're gone. So you're just trying not to disappoint them and, you know, try to continue the tradition. So, yeah, it's definitely a good thing going there. And, uh, you know, I'm lucky to have, have played there. So now I want to stick there because you talked about growing up in Algonquin and how you had the opportunity to play a bunch of different sports and you competed in baseball throughout your time in high school. What did baseball mean to you growing up, and how good were you? Yeah, baseball is something uh, my dad kind of instilled in me. He played college baseball um, and actually coached a little bit over at Harper College um, in the area. Um, so something that it was, it was definitely my number one sport growing up. Um, thought that that was going to be, you know, what I played in college, you know, all the way up until junior year. Um, going into my junior year, I mean, I wasn't even that big of a football guy, but um, something about running out of the tunnel at Marion and, you know, having everyone screaming and being able to be violent, um, definitely changed my mind a little bit. So I got a little, a little more fired up and I, that's when I ultimately knew that football was going to be, you know, what I wanted to keep playing. But, um, I, th- I think I was all right at baseball, you know, I got to play, you know, travel ball all growing up and 
you know, I, I thought that was going to be what I was going to do in college. But like I said, I kind of fell in love with football junior year, and that's what I had decided to go with, though. And now just real quick, I, I, I might have missed it, but what position did you play? Oh, yeah. So at the beginning of high school, I was, that's when I was, you know, playing everything. I was pitching, playing third, playing first. Um, and then kind of going to football, I started, you know, I'm playing offensive defensive line and uh, the East Suburban Catholic Conference, which is pretty um, good football in Illinois. I mean, anyone who knows high school football knows that, you know, it's a pretty competitive schedule. So that's when I started, you know, getting bigger. So it's hard to, you know, be 270 and be playing, you know, all, all around the field. So I was playing primarily pitcher my junior and senior year, just being a PO. Um, so I had more time to, you know, just lift weights and kind of keep my keep my foot in on baseball, but also be primarily focused on football. So, And Gavin, you have quite an amount of siblings as well. I saw that you grew up with three sisters. So now were there constant battles growing up for who got the car on a Friday night or hot water for a shower or anything else that you always hear from people with a bunch of siblings? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, we definitely we, we got along pretty good, uh, thank God. But I definitely, you know, would, would choose my battles, maybe start a little bit of a ruckus between my other sisters, start some fights from the outside, saying so and so said this. Um, so <laughs> maybe that's how I learned to play a little bit of mind games that I also play in the field. But uh, no, it, it was definitely a great situation. And I've, you know, they're, I have one sister who's pretty much the same age as me, one is five years older, and one is three years younger. So it's been kind of cool to kind of see them grow up to the different stages and, you know, and get along as well as, um, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's just been great. It's better than uh, better than I thought it was when I was 10 and wanted to tackle <laughs> a brother. But, uh, yeah, it was a great situation. So. And, Gavin, I want to ask you about something that came up a couple of weeks ago where there were reports that you had entered the transfer portal. Just where are you currently with your plans for your football future? And if you can talk about how the recruiting process is a little bit different this time around, if you've already started that. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, I was kind of, uh, it was one of those things where, you know, in March, you're like, oh, well, this, it's like, this isn't going to carry on over to fall. We won't, won't really think about it getting canceled. And, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, I still wanted to do. Um, at Drake, and it was, you know, it's a place that's been so special to me. The people are so special, and um, it was important for me to see that out and um, to kind of have that be taken away. Definitely, I'll be honest, there was a few days where I was just really down, and I wasn't sure w- what was next, and the thought of not being able to play um, at Drake still hurts a lot, to be honest with you. But um, kind of just taking a step back and thinking rationally, I just know that um, it's in my best interest to kind of, you know, further my education while I'm in this time, like obviously – um, there's not a lot going on right now. So my plan is to, you know, attend grad school somewhere. Um, I, th- I just thought it made sense if I'm going to be playing football, sticking around and play, use my uh, eligibility up that it makes sense to find a place that I can further my education as well as play high quality football. Um, so just getting over the sting of, you know, not being able to put that Drake blue on again hurts. Um, but the recruiting process, you know, it has been interesting. You kind of forget um, over the years because it's been like four years since, you know, being recruited. Um, what, all, what, all, what that all looks like. Um, but so the right away we were figured out some eligibility issues because um, Drake, Drake's not scholarship. Uh, there's not athletic scholarship. So um, you got to pay your own way, which is definitely something um, that, you know, you, you want to get school paid for, but it's definitely taught me a lot, you know, how, how to work hard and you got to, you know, work some odd jobs and stuff like that to, to make it through. But um, it's definitely been weird. And, uh, I'm excited. I'm definitely, I like actually decided to, you know, wait till the winter to transfer. Um, so I'm just going to finish up the degree. So there's no eligibility issues or waivers. So I'm going to get my degree, d- graduate from Drake, which was a plan. Um, and then, you know, see if I can't, you know, find a place to, to fill up, play out my last year of eligibility. So. And then Gavin, what type of player would a program be getting in you because you're back to back first team all pioneer league defensively. So what do you bring to a defense? Yeah, I think I bring uh it's, it's kind of corny and cliche. I just bring effort. Um and I, I think that obviously, you know, it's easy to, you know, be on the field and just keep like relentlessly uh you know, going to play after play. Um but I think that carries on like off the field too, um, as far as like training and you know, working on your craft. Um, so I definitely pride myself on, you know, I spent a lot of random nights alone um, on the field, uh, just working on moves as well as, you know, waking up early and, and running hills that I don't feel like running, but 
Um, I, I've got Yeah, I just think it's going to be a gritty, a gritty guy who's, who's always going to keep coming and also be a leader um, for the other guys. So, Gavin, I want to move towards something that's a little bittersweet for you. The Drake team had the chance to go to China and take part and take place in a couple of football and non-football events, finishing it off with a game against a Chinese all-star team. But unfortunately, you were back in Iowa finishing up an internship and you did not get to make that trip. But maybe if you could just share for our listeners what your teammates have told you about that experience and just overall what it did for them. Yeah, definitely, definitely stung a little bit, but that's the perks of Drake, uh, Drake University, getting a chance to get a pretty good inter- internship in a city like Des Moines. Um, but man, it's almost like I did go on the trip because all the stories I heard. Um, I mean, I remember when, I, when they got back, I actually just got back from my shift. Um, it was like 10 o'clock at night and I, uh, we were, we probably stayed up till two o'clock and they're just telling stories on stories of playing in China, um, what the culture was like and walking the great wall. And as well as just talking to players after the game um, in China. Um, so definitely was something that I think opened up a lot of my teammates eyes. And like, cause a lot of us, a lot, a lot of people haven't left, you know, the Midwest on our team, you know, people, a lot of people from Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois. Um, so just to kind of get the chance to hear how much that meant to them to meet the people that they met, to see the things that they've only seen in pictures was definitely powerful. And I think, you know, it's only right that I make it over there eventually and kind of do the things that, that they got to do because it definitely changes their uh, perspective on things. And like you said, Drake affords a lot of opportunities and some of those opportunities came on the field with some top notch non-conference matchups, including a battle with Iowa state where you had them up against the ropes, took them down to the final moments of the game. Unfortunately lost a heartbreaker, but Gavin, Take me through the emotions of that day, being in the Iowa State Stadium and flirting with victory. Just recap that day for me, if you could. Yeah, wow, that's definitely a, it's definitely a day that's still, you know, I remember vividly. Um, I, I actually remember getting the news that we were playing them. Uh, it was very exciting. But um, I, think, I think it surprised a lot of people that were watching, obviously. But it did. I mean, I – I expect I went I fully full well went to that stadium and I, I expected to win. Um and that was just a special team that year. Um and that's kind of the culture we've tried to maintain. But um walking especially as a defense, when we walked into that stadium, we knew that the expectation was to give up zero points. The expectation was to give up zero yards every single play because that's just what we play with uh during the year because we were a top ten defense that year in the FCS. But so I'll, I'll be honest, though, like looking across and seeing Hakeem Butler and Dave Montgomery, like you're kind of like, oh, wow. Like I've, I've, I've seen him on TV. I've heard of him. Um, but that, the, to be honest with you, after the game, I wasn't sitting in my locker smiling like, man, that was cool. We almost had him. I was pissed. Uh, that was a game that we should have won. And I feel like, you know, I'm always – I'm a pretty competitive guy, so I'm thinking what could I have done more. Um, but kind of, you know, definitely like kind of de- like disassociating myself from that. I'm able to look back now and say like, yeah, I was a – Really cool experience. Um, definitely a good game, and you know, thanks to Iowa State for having us. But, but like I said, the competitor to me still, still wishes I could go back and maybe find a way to win that game. But definitely a great experience overall. You mentioned something in that answer about being a competitor and wanting to win. So I want to ask you about a situation in game where if you get the green light on a third and long situation to go get the quarterback. What does that competitor in you do? What is, you know, your preferred spot to line up on the line? Are you looking for something pre-snap? Do you have a certain move that you would want to use that you like in that situation? Is there a counter that comes with it? So now I know that was like four or five questions in one. So Gavin, I guess what I'm asking you is if you have the green light to get the quarterback, how are you getting there? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's definitely something that I feel out, if that makes sense. So, you know, if, if I'm going up against a really aggressive guard, because I, I prim- primarily play a three tech and some two or a shade, um, if, if I feel leaning, you know, I'm, I might go push pull. If I know he's on his back, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bull rush him into the ground. Um, if I see him leaning left or right, I'm either going to counter or, you know, give him a jab, club arm over. Um, so it's definitely something I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about, you know, it's third and long, like, okay we were in a situation similar to this if it was second and long or we had, it was third and long, you know, last quarter, 
uh, what was he doing? Maybe and maybe that third and long, I'm setting something up. But uh, if, if it's a perfect situation, you know, I'm feeling all, I like to you know hit an outside spin if I'm feeling real. If it's third and real long, I know for sure. Oh, they're gonna be passing off the screen or something. I'm definitely gonna hit some sort of spin. Um, but I definitely do, you know, I like a jab club arm over. I like I got a cross chop I'm working on. Um, so yeah, I definitely have been trying to, you know, further my craft and saw a video of Von Miller talking about um Bruce Smith teaching us some things and he said you need three moves. Uh if you have three moves then then you can't be stopped. So I, I feel pretty confident in a few of my moves. I'm trying to, you know, learn more and more and kind of um perfect those moves. So Gavin, earlier you mentioned something about effort being what you brought to a defense. Now, I want to ask you what you think is the most important trait for a D lineman to have if they want to be successful. And a lot of people will argue that effort can make or break a defensive lineman. But in your opinion, Gavin, what's that trait? Yeah, effort is definitely a big thing. Um, I think, I think honestly, a lot of it is, you know, the more competitive football you play, um, it's, it's going to be kind of having a short memory. Um, just to be honest with you, if, if you're playing competitive football, the guy across from you is no, no slouch. So definitely when I, you know, play against a team like Iowa state or South Dakota state, you're, you're not going to win every single rep. Um, so I think being able to, you know, recognize, oh, here's the situation. Here's what happened. You know, I, I got doubled, you know, and they got a little push on me. Okay. Uh, I mean, where, where was my placement? What did I do wrong? And then, okay, what, how can I do it better next time? But then also, you know, you got to have a cue to kind of flip the switch that, okay, we can, we can reflect on this when we get to the sideline after this drive, but it's the next play. So I think if you have effort and you have a short memory, and honestly, if you have a good game plan and watch a ton of film, um, you, you should be okay um, no matter who you are. So Let's go ahead and let's slide over to some non-football questions, Gavin. And let's really give the people a chance to get to know you. So let's start off with the question that's really going to put you out there. What's your biggest fear? Ah, oh, man, I'm trying to think. It might be, it might be heights. <laughs> uh, I, I never thought it was, but, you know, I went to Niagara Falls a few years ago. Um, that was something that was like, man, I didn't, I didn't realize how scared I was. And definitely, <laughs> you know, when I'm uh, – hiking or something like that. If I look forward, I'm having a blast. But if I look down, I'm like, oh, no. So if I had to go with anything, it'd probably be heights. I know it's basic. I know a lot of people say that, but it's definitely that. But what's the cutoff? So, like, can you get on a step stool and put, like, the tree topper on a Christmas tree? Like, can you do that? Like, seven, eight feet? Is that good or no? Yeah. I, I could do that. I can do that. I'm definitely, a, definitely not that scared. And I live on, like, the fourth floor of an apartment complex, and that's not too bad. So I think it's got to be – a little bit crazier than that, but <laughs> all right. And let's ask you a question about something near campus. If you were to open a restaurant near campus, what would you be known for? Would you be a wing spot, a breakfast place? What would you be known for? I've actually thought about this already because every Saturday, if you're not up at like 6 a.m., you're not getting a seat in Des Moines at a breakfast place uh, every Saturday, Sunday. So I'm opening another breakfast spot because. First of all, it would be profitable because literally everyone is trying to get breakfast at that time and there's never any spots. <laughs> um, and I'm just a big, uh, I'm a big uh, breakfast food guy, I guess. So I probably have to go with that. All right. What would be the signature meal? Would it be an omelet? Would it be a breakfast sandwich? <sighs> I probably have to go. I'm a big skillet guy. Uh, maybe Mexican skillet or something like that. A little, some jalapenos in there. Add a little uh, twang to it. All right. I'll, you sign me up for one of those. I'll take that. <laughs> Let's go ahead. Let's slide over to your Twitter real quick because you're actually a really good follow. Go ahead and give a follow at Gav Gav Deneen if you haven't already. Filled with sports takes and commentary. And I want to ask you, if you were given the opportunity to sit down with three current athletes, one from the NBA, one from the NFL, and one from MLB, and you were just given the opportunity to talk life and sports – and just really everything and anything in between get to pick their brains. Who would those three people be? Yeah, I think starting first off in the NBA, um, growing up in Chicago, um, and Derrick Rose losing to him every single year and my heart being broken every single time. Uh, I had a lot of hatred for LeBron. <laughs> um, but over the, over the years, I mean, it's just he's so consistent. Um, so it would have to be him because, you know, seeing him, you know, grow up as a 16-year-old with – 
the biggest hype um, on his shoulders and, you know, never making a mistake, doing everything the right way, you know, being a, a great uh, voice and activist, not being afraid to speak up as well as just being, you know, absolutely obsessed with his craft, um, staying healthy and focusing on his body. It's definitely someone, you know, I'd want to pick his brain and, you know, see what he has. Cause he definitely has a lot of knowledge. Um, as far as football, I think I'd have to go with Aaron Donald just so he can tell me how the hell he does what he does <laughs> um, because <laughs> he's an absolute animal. Um, I uh, plays inside, plays a lot of three tech. So that's definitely someone I could, if I could just pick his brain and see, you know, what cues he uses to use a certain move or what the situation is down a distance, uh, that'd definitely be a valuable conversation, even if it's only like five minutes. Um, and then Major League Baseball, I probably have to go with Tim Anderson, uh, shortstop for the White Sox. Um, I'm a big White Sox fan. If you if you go through my Twitter, um, mm-hmm. so seeing the way he's kind of, <clears throat> he, you know, he, he was a first round draft pick, but people kind of thought he was an athlete. He was going to be a decent player, and he's you know won the AL batting title last year. And just seeing um, how obsessed he is with his craft and. He's got a mentality of, you know, making baseball fun, which is pretty cool. He's kind of challenging the norms of, you know, what's, you know, the unwritten rules. And he's not afraid to be a little excited and add a little flair. Kind of like what I talked about earlier with baseball is kind of, you know, a little monotonous. And people say it's boring, but um, you watch him play. He kind of gives you the similar vibes, you know, (laughs) running out, running out of a tunnel uh, with the crowd screaming. So I think those would be the three. What would you consider to be your most unusual talent? Ah, I, my friends always make fun of me for this, but uh, it's probably just know. I know like a lot of random players on random teams. Like <laughs> my friend will ask me like, who's the, like who's the replacement kicker if the bears kicker goes down or like who, where did so-and-so go to college? Um, so probably just random sports facts, something like that. <laughs> Can I put you on the spot? Yeah. I mean, now I'm, now I'm nervous. I don't know what's going to happen here, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> all right. All right. Fun. Then, then I'll give you an easy one to start off. Where did Tom okay. Brady go to college? Michigan. That one was easy. <laughs> okay. Now, can we go baseball, basketball, football? Yeah, let's do it. Where is Mike Trout from? What's his home state? New Jersey, I believe, right? Yeah. All right. There you go. So, we got a baseball, we got a football, and now I'll give you a basketball. Which NBA point guard, who is also head of the players' union, scored 61 points in a high school game to honor their grandfather after their grandfather passed away. I want to say Kyrie, right? Chris Paul. Oh, I thought the players, you knew you threw me off there. <laughs> hey, but you know what? Two out of three is not bad. I'm a junkie yeah. like you. So I can, I can yeah. always go into the back pocket and try to get one that'll stump you, but you did a pretty you good job me. right there. Um, now let's go ahead. And what is something that people consider to be odd or weird? that you recommend everyone tries at least once? Let's see. Let's see. Odd or weird? Man. I'm a pretty boring guy. I'm trying to think here. I'm trying to think, <laughs> I'm trying to think what, are the, what are the weird things that I do. Um, I'm, a big, <laughs> I'm a big smelling salts guy. Um, <laughs> really? So I, like, I like to keep the intensity up. I obviously use them for lifting, but – Last, last year, I felt like I was drinking too much coffee, so I'd wake up in the morning, crack a smelling salt, and get the day going. Um, so, oh, wow. Oh, so, <laughs> you're, so you're about that life. Yeah, so <laughs> my friends and crap are always uh, drinking coffee, so I was like, all right, how can I do this without having too much caffeine? So I just got a short, short burst, get out of bed bright and early. <laughs> so uh, I've definitely taken a break, you know, over the quarantine. <laughs> I've been, been doing it without the, the salt, but maybe uh, thinking of that, maybe that's what I need to get back on track. <laughs> Absolutely. And before we get out of here, Gavin, are there any final words that you want to share with our listeners? Uh, no, I, I just really appreciate you having me on. You know, it's always good to talk ball and, you know, just kind of chop it up, talk sports. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a big sports guy. So uh appreciate guys like you that, you know, like to do this in their and as their career and their free time and try to, you know, get more people that are uh, all in on sports and kind of spread spread the knowledge of a lot of people. So yeah, I just appreciate you reaching out and this was fun. Hey, I appreciate those words, Gavin. Thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, until next time for Gavin Deneen, I am Craig Forrestal. Stay safe and be easy. (laughs) 
Hey everybody, Craig Forstall. Thanks for tuning in and listening to another episode of That Sports Guys podcast. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at that underscore sports underscore guy to catch all the latest updates and podcast episodes. Until next time, stay safe and be easy.